Uh, well, Richmond are absolutely going to be one of the must-watch sides this year. Uh, can they get back to the top of the mountain, I think, is a big question that everybody's posing. Uh, they've had a big announcement this week, co-captains for the first time in club in their club's history. Uh, and if there's one thing you know about a club that's so well-run uh, and so successful as Richmond have been over the last few years, that you would be foolish to write them off. Uh, and you would do so at your peril. Uh, one of the guys that's going to have a big say in their season and how it unfolds this year, as he has done every year since he's been there, uh, one of everyone's favourites, certainly one of ours here at SEN, of course, a three-time premiership forward from the Tigers, Jack Rewalt. Hello, mate. Hi, Sammy. How are you, mate? Look, I'm really good. Uh, we're going to have a chat in a little minute because I think that you may have just secured one of the greatest ambassadorial roles of all time uh, with National Pies. We're going to talk about it in a moment, but I, you are going to do something that I've only I have dreamed about. Uh, growing up as a staunch pie eater my whole life. So I'm looking forward to having a chat to you about that. Um, talk me through co-captains. I I don't know why, but I had it in my head that when it got announced, I went, well, that doesn't sound very Richmond to me. Um, and I don't know why I thought that, but I just did. Take me through co-captains. Dylan Grimes, Nank the Tank. Uh, how did this come about? Yeah, um, oh, look, it's probably... <laughs> It's something Richmond's done for a while now. We've probably broken the mould a little bit. Uh, Richmond used to be known as the, the team that finished ninth and were very unsuccessful. And then we've obviously been through a little period of success. Last year was a, what we hope is a little blip in the radar. Um, but, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's a, I suppose it's a case of... We had two fantastic candidates that... Well, we had lots of fantastic candidates, sorry. But we had two real standouts that, in terms of the voting and... Um, and looking at the the metrics of, of what we believe to be our 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 best fit for a captain, um, two guys named Son out, and, and we couldn't split them in the end. So we thought, well, you've got to break the mould at some point. You've got to do some. You've always got to do one thing for the first time for the first time, and we've done that, and we've decided to have co-captains. And to be honest, it's a really exciting proposition for for our group, and. Um, one that I think the players are very happy with the result um, and, and feel like we've had a, uh, a great process in, in, in coming up with our, our two captains in, in Toby and, uh, and Dylan. So, Damien Hardwick speak about the process. Can you take us inside it? How did, how did this selection come about? Yeah, it's a, well, without going into too much detail, because it, it is still our IP and we're, we, mm. we, hold the, we hold it very sort of uh, close and... and um, I find it very important, but it, it's it really the names of of the of the players that were up for for candidacy. I suppose weren't sort of bandied around early on. A lot was done on um, what we felt a, a great captain looked like, and, and I mean, a lot of our guys, their, their unconscious bias falls directly into what, what we've had, and that is obviously Trent, who's been a fantastic leader for us for a long time. So we sort of asked them to to pick the eyes out of that in terms of what they want as the captain and you get a whole range of different things from different age demographics to different upbringings in terms of pe- what people see as leaders so came out with our, our, our dot points there and then sort of tried to join the dots really in, in terms of what we thought was their, our strengths and what the players thought were, were strengths for, for each individual that had put their hand up and um, yeah we've, we've, we've come out with two guys that um, we feel cover all the aspects that will um, accommodate this year's playing group. Do you know if that's common? Because I, I love how that sounds, that you actually you, you design the perfect captain and then once you've established as a group what's the perfect captain for us, you then try to identify who are who is the player or players in this case that best fit that description. I, I think that's brilliant. Do you know if that's quite common in other clubs? Yeah, not sure, not sure, because I haven't been privy to, to many other um, selections of, of, of captains or leaders. And one word that we don't use is we, we never use the word perfect, um, just for the fact that, um, that idea, our idea on leadership is that it's always sort of meant to be flawed a little bit because yeah. it shows a real a real vulnerability to um, to the followers, the, the, the players that aren't the, the captain and the people that follow the leader, that um, it's okay to, to not be perfect and you don't have to strive for, for perfection. You can strive for, still strive for, for greatness and to be the best version of you, but no one is perfect. And we sort of, so it's probably attributed to the way we play a little bit too. We, ne- we never try and try, play perfect football. We just mm. try and play our, our best football. So 
Um, in terms of other other selection criteria for other other people, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, it's it's an interesting one because you you can go just a, a, a pure simple player vote, mm. um, which um, sometimes finds that a lot of younger players may vote for the, who they think the best player is. Um, and and I've seen captains that have, have been captains of football clubs that probably haven't been the best the best leader, but they've just been the best player. And then it's you know, or you get other people involved in the football club because it's such a, a big broad business that you need to have someone that can tick off all aspects of of, of of being the leader of an actual club as well. Like rather than just being the leader of the players, you've still got to be the face of the football club. Um, you've still got to, to have off field um, expectations of what you do with coterie members, um, what you do with how you ca- ca- talk to the senior coach and the senior coaching group, how you deal with the board, um, and all those sort of things. So, I mean, this is a lot, one thing we haven't had to think about for a long time due to the fact that Trent's been fantastic in the role. So, um, whilst we're whilst we're sad to, and, and I'm personally sad to see him go as as captain, uh, he won't be lost on us because he'll still be imparting his wisdom. It, it, this is a really exciting time mm. for. For, what, for, for a group that's got a new, two new faces that will lead them. Uh, new faces bring new ideas and, and, and we won't lose the old because we'll still have Trent and, and, and myself and, and Shane there have been there for so long. But we just get two, two guys to come in and, and look to stamp their mark on, on what is um, a very hungry group. Jack Rewalt with us uh, on the Macca's run on SEN. Um, if I had a frame to market and it would have been around um, put, your, put a couple of dollars on... Richmond's next captain from Tasmania. I would have thought you would have been very short priced, um, uh-huh. and the, the names of Hart and Stewart and I thought Rewalt and Rich, something Richardson never did. I wouldn't. I would not in the life of me thought that Nankervis would be the name next up to be the next Tasmanian captain uh, of the Richmond Footy Club. But that's where we find ourselves. Uh, I think that surprised a lot of people. I'm being facetious, of course, just to give you a bit of a wind up, Jack. But um, I think that one was a bit of a bolt from the blue for some people. Yeah, yeah. Look, and you know what? That's um, this. It probably sums up AFL football in in general, really. That a lot of people judge um, people and players and clubs off the solely what they see on the weekend, or they read on on social media, or they read in the paper. That there's so much that goes on inside the four walls of of an organisation like an AFL club. That the nitty gritty, which you, you never get to see unless you you're lucky enough to be a part of the organisation. And I mean. What, what what Toby brings is he brings a ferocious attitude on field, um, and then it's in terms of off field he's uh, an extremely caring young man, um, well balanced, um, very very thoughtful, um, and and he sort of had to do it the, the hard way a little bit too in terms of flying his trade in Sydney for a bit there, being a yeah. event for a grand final. Um, being a, then, then after being traded, coming to Richmond with a, what, what was what was at the start of uh, 2017, a lot of uncertainty. Um, and I think a, I think a lot of our guys attach themselves to to, to, to Toby as a, as a person and, and, and what he symbolises. And I, I'm um, I think it's a little bit nostalgic and the, the fact that the guy that gets to compete in the first contest of every game is now our captain or one of the captains of our football club. And, and, and that's pretty important, I reckon, to have yep. a, a sort of big, ferocious beast like that. You think of like Matthew Promise, who obviously captain Port Adelaide, was was, was very similar to, to, to Toby in the way he played. Just yeah. Adam, Adam Kingsley about it, actually, uh, who played with Matty Promise. There's some real similarities there. I, I mean, I, I just can't wait to see the first time Toby gets to lead the group out uh, on the AFL calendar. will be against Carlton, and he will get that first opportunity to to set the scene for the group and, and what great opportunity for Toby. Uh, you, you, meant, you said something before about uh, about vulnerability and I wanted to ask you about Damien Hardwick. I, I got quite... I found myself getting quite... Not to lay it on too thick, but I found myself getting quite emotional reading his article during the week uh, in the Herald Sun that he did where he spoke about last year and the struggles that he was having and how the personal affected the professional and that he wasn't at his best. And I, I just thought... And, and I was one that maybe said maybe you shouldn't have complained about Marvel and things like that. But I just, I thought it was so impressive and, and courageous and admirable. And it's all the things that we are, t- are pleading with men to do more and more for him to be that honest, that reflective, that vulnerable in that chat, that open. I, 
if I'm reading that and I don't know him and I've never met him, I think we interviewed him a couple of times. How did you feel when you were reading that from from the guy that you've, you know, had has been an intangible part of your life for a fair while now? Um, oh, look, I think it fills me with a great sense of pride that mm. um, the leader of, of our of our club and um, in terms of our our playing group and, and our staff um, is so uh, open. Um, at, at, at being wrong as well, like that's a vulnerability. I know we, I said already that we don't speak about the word perfect because it just it literally does not exist in terms of yeah, the human, I love that. human being. There is there is no perfect human being out there. We have all made mistakes. We've all said things, and and, and I've said things. That if I could turn back time and take them back, <laughs> I would. But you, you you're not Robinson you Crusoe there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you learn from your mistakes. Yeah. Uh, and and you put your hand up and you say, yeah, yeah you know what I've 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 made a blue here. Um, it actually allows the it allows other people to, especially your disciples or your players underneath you or your staff underneath you. It allows them to to come out of themselves a little bit and, and know that it's okay to to make a mistake or to maybe pull the wrong rein when tr- doing something in their life that they're not going to be crucified and that the sun does come up the next day. So. Um, yeah, look, it, it, I think he fills our group with pride, um, and uh, and like like Trent has led and like Damien has led, we just look to to follow in their footsteps, and 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 they're the footsteps now that we'll follow with with Dylan and and Toby. I think we're learning more and more now just of just how tough that role and and maybe sometimes how lonely that role can be. I mean, when you hear Chris Scott saying last year that he'd if his brother said should I coach again, he'd tell him no, uh, and we've seen what we you know. We understand that Simon Goodwin went through some struggles over the last couple of years, and and we're hearing those things. And I wonder whether we're just scratching the surface of that, and it's something that we'll look a bit more deeper into. That as far as this job goes, just how tough and 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 sometimes how lonely it can be, um, and how difficult it can be as well. Um, but we can have that chat maybe another day. But I think we're just starting to find out a little bit more about it. Yeah, no, it's it's they're, they're glorified positions, and they're, they're they're positions that people seek out to do and. Arguably Australia's biggest game, but yeah, the highs do come with the lows. Mm. Um, just the just the time invested, um, the the mental side of of your life that you invest in, and the senior coaches invest into to their to their boys and into into their girls as well. Like yeah, AFLW and, and obviously our, our men's competition as well. Like. There, there's. You can tell that they bloody care, and and, yep. and it takes a it takes a big toll on on uh, on on the people that take those positions, and it's part of a uh, a leadership group and a part of a support team that um that that every club has that you've got to try mm. and take the burden as much as you possibly can because there is a a huge weight that goes on the shoulders of, of the people that do lead the football clubs. Uh, Jack Rewatt with us on the Maccas run. Going to talk about his National Pies ambassadorship. Very exciting stuff in just a moment. But, um, hey, uh, are you okay with Sydney Stack jumping off, throwing uh, a pretty good reverse, I've got to say, uh, off a rock formation into uh, a body of water below? Uh, it's been pretty divisive. Some would say that uh, your body is like your tool belt or your toolkit if you're a trader. You don't leave that in the back of the ute for someone to steal it because you need that to get rock up to work with. Uh, where others would say, no, players have got to live. He's probably done it a thousand times. I grew up at the Bendigo pool doing that every summer. But uh, where do you sit on it, Jack? Oh, it's a non-issue for mine. Yeah. I was a very, quite surprised that well, what I would describe as the premium drive show in, in sports radio in Australia <laughs> thought that that would be a great topic to talk about and that the people would be engaged in it. Um, but, yeah, non, non-issue for mine. Non, non-issue. If he had have hurt himself, does it then become an issue? Uh, well, there's two schools of thought here. You can yeah. tell, um, you can tell young men to come in and how to live their lives and and, and police them with an inch an, in, an inch of their life, mm. or you can let them be adults. And if they make wrong decisions, they serve the consequences of it and they learn the lessons. Now, I'm a, I'm a big believer that you um, you can't baby people in 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 terms of um, in terms of the way they they grow up because they will never learn lessons and they'll continue to make errors and the, the lessons will be learned by someone else who has to cover up for them. So um, we, we speak about that a lot, that, that mm. the, the players, um, you're, still a, you're still a human being and you're still an adult and 
you choose how you act and you serve the consequences or you reap the rewards of of what you do. So, um, yeah, it's uh, as I said, I, I found it um, a little bit comical that it, that, it, that it made it as far as it did. Um, but one thing I will say about Sydney Stark is he, he, he's put in a fantastic last month of, of, of training. Um, and, he, and, yes, he's had some... Um, He's had a few trials in in his past, um, but he is uh, he's looking in fantastic shape. The best shape I've I've seen him look at, uh, looking sorry, and his training standards are, are are really great at the moment. So we're we're really proud of of what he's doing at the moment, and um, we will continue to support him to the hilt. Yeah, I, I, I'm a massive fan. I've got to say, not blowing smoke, but um, I'm, I think he's. Oh, I think he could have just an almighty year, and he is as tough as they come. I can't wait to see what uh, 2022 is for him. Just a couple more, um, and love chatting to you. Uh, I've got the feeling that Dustin Martin's got a mantle to reclaim this year. Uh, can't, I have no understanding um, or frame of reference to what he's gone through with a lacerated kidney, losing 10 or more kilos and having to come back from that. A long time lying down uh, in a hospital bed, but he sits there and, and watches... You know, Petrarca and Bontempelli and Oliver and Wine's name come up in lights. But um, this is the guy that Lee Matthews said, I don't get worried about, I don't get offended being compared to. And I think there's another chapter to be written in the story. And are you as excited as I am about what Dustin Martin's going to be, uh, might just look to do <laughs> to the competition this year? Um, yeah, no, I am. Um, I, I don't, to be honest, I don't really think about Dustin, the player, that much mm. anymore because I sort of know what you're going to get, uh, and the, the kidney issue aside and everything like that. The, the, the biggest thing for Dustin going forward is, um, I mean, he's, he's just been like, yes, the, the injury, but I, I think the passing of his father is probably yeah. the, the that's 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 the the most trying thing in his life at the moment, and and, and that would be for anyone to to reconcile that in terms of. Um, I mean, he hadn't seen his father for, for nearly two years yeah. um, prior to, to him passing. Um, yeah, I, I think I think um, that's where Dustin will need our, our support the most. Uh, it, he will he will bring what he brings on field, and um, Lee's Lee's one hundred percent right. He, yeah. he, he's arguably one of the greatest players to have played the game, but he's also extremely professional as well. But yeah. um, I, I never worry about him as a player. I, I just. I just want to support him more as a, as a person. So um, I should have actually mentioned that, that too in that in that preamble. But how have you guys been able to, to do that? Because you're right, it's tough for anyone to lose a parent. But when you haven't been able to see them for a long time, and a lot of people would have experienced that uh, through COVID as well, uh, unfortunately, how have you been able to support him? Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one, Sam, when someone passes. The first sort of two to four weeks, and, and I've sort of experienced this as well. The first two to four weeks, you, you get um, an amazing amount of messages and support because it's front and line. It's the it's the follow-up post that. Yeah. Um, and and my, my, one thing I'd like, so I'll give an example from my, my own personal life, is that Steve Morris texts me every year on the um, on the date of, of Maddie's passing. Um, mm. and, and like I said, Morrow went out, sort of, out of my life for a while. He went, went to Adelaide and did a few things away from there, and he came back to the football club to play VFL, and now he's a part of our coaching group. Um, so, for him to do that is, is is so important, and they're the relationships that I mean, Dustin will be will be re- leaning on and, and requiring for people that don't just be there at the start; they're there for for the journey. And um, he's got a he's got a lot of a lot of uh, mates down at the football club, and a lot of mates outside the football club that are. So making sure he's going okay, and 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 uh, he'll have his ups and he'll have his downs, but mm. got a great support network around him at the moment. Oh, I don't doubt that for a second. Um, you are about to do something that I think uh, I, I, anyone who just thrives on a meat pie would be insanely jealous of what you're about to do with national pies. Not only are you an ambassador for them, but you're going to just explain what you're about to do with them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no. So, no, well, this is a funny story. National Pies came on board. I did a, a charity ride for for a young man who unfortunately became a, a quadriplegic in in Hobart um, over my break, and um, they jumped on board as a sponsor, um, donated some money to to helping um, the young man Ryan Wiggins and his recovery uh, back from from uh, from what he's uh, what's happened to him, and then just started a bit of a relationship through there, and. Um, I've been lucky enough to go into the pie factory uh, down in Hobart, right in the CBD there, uh, 
and I've tasted nearly every pie on the range and I wanted to put my own skin on it as well. So they've uh, they've got me on board to help with a pie and um, oh. I can't I can't tell you what it is oh, yet. But, come uh, on. I can't tell you what it is, but it's going it's going to go Australia wide. I don't. I, we hope to go global, um, but it's certainly going to go right around Australia. So uh, very exciting times. It's, it's a lot of fun too. I tell you what, it is a lot of fun. But I sweated bullets when I was in there uh, at, in the uh, pie factory when they were making them. It was a hot, hot, hot job, and uh, certainly uh, I count my lucky stars that I can somewhat kick a bag of uh, a bag of. <laughs> red leather around and do okay so uh, no I'm uh, great fun good fun to be involved with uh, that's really exciting you and National Pies that looks like a a match made in heaven thank you so much mate always enjoy catching up with you one of our own here uh, at SEN of course I didn't even ask you if this is going to be your last year because I wouldn't do that to you mate I'll just save that for another time <laughs> I might have another interview before then you can ask it next time fair enough uh, thanks mate I appreciate it alright Sammy good on you mate